Welcome to TV20 News. We are Cleveland. I'm Leah Hasledge. The city of Cleveland will soon be getting a multi-million dollar state-of-the-art city kennel. TV20's Enrique Correa has more on the planned facility, which features the latest in green technology. Mayor Frank Jackson and other city officials, plus some playful dogs, broke ground on the new $6 million city kennel. The new state-of-the-art facility will house a division of animal care and control, plus provide a new home for the city dog's adoption program. The planned new kennel and the extra staff are part of the mayor's increased budget. Well, first, let me thank uh, voters of the city of Cleveland for supporting issue 32. This would not have happened uh, uh, to the level it's happened without their support of issue 32. It allowed us to enhance the budget for the kennels by hiring 19 additional people to make sure that this facility is operated in the way it needs to be. The new city kennel is being built in Councilman Matt Zone's ward. He says a lot of time and effort went into getting this project in place. We've been working for nearly a decade to build a new facility. There's been some challenges with funding and uh, our ability to secure and find a campus large enough to accommodate a facility like this. But, you know, the thousands of volunteers who live and volunteer within our city, uh, it's really a proud day for them. Once the $6 million, 15,000 square foot kennel is completed, it will be able to house up to 150 dogs, plus the kennel will be able to accommodate up to 200 animals during emergencies. This is, this is huge. The, the current building we're in on West 7th was built in 1977. The needs of animal control have changed tenfold in that amount of time. So this has been in the plannings for almost 10 years. We're, we're finally here to where this thing is going to get moving, where we're going to be able to take better care of the animals, quality of life. We're going to be able to get people as well as the animals in and out of that building in a much more efficient, um, humane fashion, and uh, we couldn't be more excited. The new kennel meets all green standards and will sit almost on five acres of land so the animals will have plenty of outdoor space to play and exercise. The outdoor space is something that was super important, so that wasn't taken into account in our current facility. So dogs are going to be able to get outside multiple times a day in a safe environment to, uh, to be able to be a dog. It will take about 14 months to build the new city kennel, and dogs like Shirley here will surely be happy to have a new home. In Cleveland, I'm Enrique Correa, TV20. We are Cleveland. Right, girl? There you go. For more than a decade, a local nonprofit organization has been helping the Cleveland Kennel raise money to care for its animals. The 13th annual Art for Animals is a fundraiser by the Friends of the Cleveland Kennel to raise monies and to provide the necessary medical care to dogs and cats in need in the city's animal control. Art for Animals was held at the Cleveland Masonic Auditorium. The event also included a live and a silent auction of custom-designed fiberglass of dogs and cats by 23 Cleveland artists. Organizers say this annual fundraiser is vital to the organization. This event um, is 70% of our budget comes from this event. So um, last year we raised $92,000. It's completely run by volunteers. So we work on this event for about a year prior. Um, all of the artwork is 100% donated by Northeast Ohio artists. So we have over 150 pieces of art this year. We love our pets. I have a Morky. So the friends of the kennel are invaluable to our ability to serve um, that population of Cleveland, our, our cats, our dogs. And, and so we need to be able to provide the resources. If you'd like to know more information on how you can help these animals or adopt one for yourself, go to the website friendsofthecleveland.com. A group of rock stars stopped by City Hall to meet Cleveland Mayor Frank Jackson, but these aren't the rock stars you may be thinking of. These are youth in the Cleveland Municipal Court's Rock Program, or Redirecting Our Curfew Kids. The program is for minors whose parents have received a citation for their curfew violations. Judge Emanuela Gro spearheads the program. We partnered with the uh, City of Cleveland and also the uh, school, uh, the Board of Education to uh, provide parents with an opportunity to look at the information in regards to their child, their absenteeism, their grades. Uh, the rec department in terms of the redirection to provide them with exposure in the rec departments and it's our goal that once they volunteer there that perhaps they will see that a worthwhile place to uh, become engaged. 
Mayor Jackson took time out of his busy day to pose for photos with the young men and women. Afterwards, he engaged in a dialogue with them in the Red Room where they could ask the mayor any questions they may have on their minds. Rhonda Long's son is in the program, and she sees this as a very valuable and positive initiative for those with truancy and curfew issues. This program could work for a lot of kids who could need a lot more extra, you know, um, push to stay in school and get an education. I think it's a great program for the students that really, really could benefit from it. For more information on the ROCK program, visit the Cleveland Municipal Court's website at clevelandmunicipalcourt.org. Well, Mother Nature needed some assistance with her spring cleaning, and so a group of volunteers came to the Big Creek near Brookfield Park to help her out. Yolinda Moore of Cleveland's Water Pollution Control spearheaded the Big Creek cleanup. What people don't realize is when you put trash on the ground, on the sidewalk, and it rains or the snow melts, that eventually finds its way to the nearest open waterway, to the nearest storm drain. It can clog our sewer system. It can cause flooding issues. And ultimately, it can cause um, pollution in our waterways. Now in its 19th year, the Big Creek cleanup attracts many volunteers who roll up their sleeves for the good of the creek. Rachel Napolito of the Bel Air Puritist Development Corporation says cleaning up the creek can only make life in the neighborhood better. Water is very important and we're glad that so many neighbors come to help us clean, clean the water. Um, this is the Chevy branch of the Big Creek and it winds through the West 130th Street. So it's an important part of the quality of life of all the residents. If you miss this cleanup, don't worry. Moore says there are plenty more waterways they will be cleaning up in the near future. Cleveland uh, Water Pollution Control, we do beach and stream cleanups all throughout the year. Um, our main beach cleanup site is Euclid Creek over off Lakeshore Boulevard. We do the Big Creek cleanup. We do Doan Brook cleanup. We do Euclid Creek cleanup. Our website is www.clevelandwp. C.com. So we like to have anybody out to help. Even if you don't live in the area, even if you don't live in this West Side 100, West 30th Street area, come out and help us. We want everybody because everything, it all, it's one big water cycle. It affects us all, no matter where you live. A local city councilman unveiled a new program to rehab abandoned homes while providing job training to former inmates. Ward 2 Councilman Zach Reed has partnered up with Passages, a faith-based organization to start a program called Building Futures. This unique program will not only rehab homes in the Mount Pleasant, Union Miles, and Mill Creek Falls neighborhoods, it will also provide people recently released from prisons with job training as they re-enter society. Councilman Reed believes this program will help to reduce violence in his ward. We need to be rebuilding homes so we can rebuild families. This whole program is about creating jobs, first and foremost. Because I'll just repeat, nothing stops a bullet like a job. The initial uh, component of the money that I'm putting in is $50,000, and that's coming out of our casino funds. So that's $50,000 to begin the program. I've already uh, said that I'm going to put in the other $50,000. So the first, proof, the first part of the program to do the first two houses will cost us roughly about $100,000. Once the empty homes are rehabbed, the houses can be sold for forty dollars to $50,000. Members of the Passages program will pick potential candidates once they are released from prison. The President's 2018 budget proposal is threatening to eliminate a vital senior citizen program that helps seniors find employment, among other things. TV20 reporter Christian Patterson has more with this story. Yes, Leah, I'm here at the Fatima Family Center for the National Caucus and Center on Black Aging, Education and Outreach Day. The month of May is considered Older Americans Month. With so many senior citizens struggling to make ends meet, the National Caucus and Center on Black Aging invited Cleveland residents out to educate and raise awareness about the program and the resources they offer. It is vital to continue with this program so that we can provide seniors the opportunity to not have to choose between food and medication, become self-sufficient, and return to the workforce. The ultimate goal of NCBA is to get our seniors employed. These men and women are coming back into the workforce. 
for whatever reason, uh, after they have been out. And they're, they're looking for that chance to get back into the workforce and be productive again. NCBA's Senior Community Service Employment Program is in danger of losing funding. Under the President's 2018 budget, the Senior Community Service Employment Program is deemed ineffective, but specialists on the local level don't agree. Well, I think an event like today helps people learn more about this resource right, connects them to it. So while we may be familiar with it, we know so many people who aren't even aware that an organization like this exists. So the opportunity to shine some light on it helps. But then also to look at it as we look at the federal budget and where um, there may be cuts, we want to draw attention to ones that will impact Cleveland seniors. We're an age-friendly city. We want to continue to grow that and its impact on older adults, its cut would be significant. NCBA cultivated me back to being able to take charge of my life again. And as a result of that, many, many youths will benefit from it because the underlying story is passing the baton to the youth. Oh my gosh. Uh, I, I can say I've truly been blessed. Um, NCBA is a program that we definitely need in uh, the Cleveland area because I went from homeless to now working in East Cleveland City Hall. Uh, clerk of council as well as with the mayor at times. Tagline this year for for senior day is age out loud and that is so that is so poignant right now because because that's what we have to do being a senior myself that's what we have to do we have to make sure that our voice is heard and so this is just the beginning of that process as it were. Reporting from the Fatima Family Center I'm Christian Patterson for TV 20 we are Cleveland. Back to you Leah. Thanks, Christian. The Mayor's Office of Equal Opportunity held their quarterly town hall meeting for local contractors and those interested in doing business with the city at Burke Lakefront Airport. Hey, Director Melissa Burroughs spoke to us about the purpose of her office. So our primary responsibility is really to provide overall compliance for the city of Cleveland's contracts, public improvement contracts beginning at $50,000 and above. So we monitor those contracts for overall compliance, ensuring that contractors meet those goals and requirements for the city of Cleveland. The town hall meeting featured directors David Ebersole of Economic Development and Matthew Spranz of the Mayor's Office of Capital Projects, who spoke on upcoming projects within the city. So it's not enough for us to come in and talk about overall compliance. Uh, contractors and people who are, want to do work in the city of business, they want to know what are the tangible projects that are coming up in the city. And so it really was important for us to highlight the two directors and the work that they're doing within their individual departments. Because obviously when contractors do work in the city of Cleveland, it's a benefit for all. The meeting also included a keynote speech by Joe Lopez, president and CEO of Artessa Building Group, who spoke about what it takes to become an entrepreneur. And Lopez says it all starts with a vision. You want to know the future of your company. It's critical that the owner must have clarity, know what you want to be, that's a reflection, and then be able to embrace that. The second part I think you want to do is you want to have the leadership, the vision of the leadership. How do you want to manage your company? What's the culture you want to create? For more information on the Mayor's Office of Equal Opportunity, visit the City of Cleveland's website at city.cleveland.oh.us. Well, we'll be right back with more TV20 News. This is the moment I knew his future had no boundaries. There are some moments only the forest can inspire. Find yours at discovertheforest.org. Welcome back to TV20 News.
thanks to a winning campaign from a former Cleveland resident and a lot of determination from Ward 11 Councilwoman Dona Brady, a prestigious theater in Cleveland may finally be saved and renovated thanks to a new funding campaign created with the help of Mike Wolf, star of History Channel's hit TV series, American Pickers. We are here because the um, uh, National Trust for Historic Preservation chose the Variety Theater as this year's a winner of the This Place Matters Award. This Place Matters was started by Mike Wolf, who as you know is the star of American Pickers. So we're celebrating today that Mike Wolf came to view the uh, Variety Theater, to tour it, and he has also announced that he will be the um, chairman of the GoFundMe campaign to raise the money for the Balcony Cinema. At a press conference held outside the Variety Theater, Cleveland Mayor Frank Jackson spoke about what the renovation of the Variety Theater really means to the neighborhood. This effort is just not a capital improvement. It's really uh, uh, the restoration and, and the commitment to the culture and to a way of life that this uh, Variety Theater symbolizes. It's one of those things that helps to identify the community, helps to hold it together where everybody can come together, no matter what your opinions are, no matter uh, how you think about other things, you can come together on this and come together as a community to move this community forward. So how did this theater, this remnant of a bygone era, grab the attention of Mike Wolf? The answer starts with former resident Jane Ansbury. Mike Wolf from American Pickers had put on a contest with the National Trust for Historic Preservation called the This Pace Matters Campaign. And I ended up entering the Variety Theater. Basically what that was is uh, people would stand in front of a building or a pro some sort of a property and they would say why this place matters to them. Uh, we had a lot of submissions and the number one submission that we all chose was the theater here in Cleveland. I chose the variety because of the grandeur of this place and the beauty that it has. Uh, it's historic, it's something old uh, that can totally be revived again and this neighborhood can be revived again if it's refurbished. Wolf will serve as honorary chairman of the GoFundMe campaign to raise funds to renovate the balcony cinema in the theater. The balcony cinema is going to be a big screen cinema for families in this neighborhood and beyond. And so we're really grateful to have had Mike here today. If you would like to help in the restoration of the Variety Theater, visit GoFundMe.com slash Variety Theater Cleveland. The weather in Cleveland finally warmed up and that means it's officially race season and this 5K will surely push you to the max. Here's more with Christian Patterson. Yes, Leah, I'm here at Max Hayes High School for the 5K Race to the Max, put on by WireNet to help support Cleveland's best career and technical high school. So the Race to the Max this is our fifth year that we've had the race. We'll be running from the school, which is on the corner of West 65th and Clark, all the way down to Edgewater Park, turning around there and coming back to the school. And it's, uh, that's almost exactly, I looked out, that's exactly a 5K. So we also have a one mile fun walk that is just going not quite as far down West 65th. Running is recognized as the best physical form of exercise for the heart and lungs. The kids that do it really enjoy it, and when they enjoy it, it brings in others. Um, they're out there being active, and especially me being a phys ed teacher, that's what I look for, and I am obviously promoting it daily at school. So we have our practices to make sure they're geared up to run, because uh, we don't want anyone hurt, hurting themselves out on the roads. Every year we get a few more runners that come. We have a great partnership with We, we Run This City, uh, that the bulk of our runners are going to be students within CMSD. Um, but we have, I think we usually have around 200, 250, and that's where we are today. We're, we're right around 250 runners for the day. Year after year, runners continue to support Race to the Max. I did this in eighth grade, and I did 1.2, and it was well, when I was in eighth grade, I did 1.2, yeah. and I won first place in that one. So then I'm like, okay, I'm going to challenge myself a new 5K, and let's see if I win this one. Which, 
I don't know, I feel pretty confident that I will. The Race to the Max event raises critical funds for WireNet's youth programs that exclusively serve Max Hayes students. WireNet is a company, a nonprofit organization that works in conjunction with Max Hayes. Max Hayes is a vocational school, so we have welding programs, construction, we have uh, machining. So what's it, basically the money this raised today is going to help provide internships for students that are becoming certified in these uh, trades. This started as a fundraiser for our program so that we could do more with the students that we work with here. Uh, and we raise our, our goal is to raise about 10000 every year. I don't know where we netted out this year, but we'll see by the end of the day, hopefully. Reporting from Max Hayes High School, I'm Christian Patterson for TV20. We are Cleveland. The Cleveland branch of NAACP celebrated its 105th anniversary at their annual Freedom Fund dinner at the Renaissance Grand Ballroom downtown. Chapter President Michael Nelson says the Freedom Fund Dinner is the organization's largest fundraiser that enables them to continue their work throughout the city. Besides being a fundraiser, many people were also honored for their work on behalf of the NAACP. Jimmy Haslam from the Cleveland Browns, who has the most diverse front office in professional sports. Uh, Vanessa Whiting, who's the owner of the various of numerous Popeyes franchises, who's always contributing, supporting causes in the African American community. The Cleveland Eight, who really stepped up regarding Tamir Rice matter. But, you know, we, we have a young man by the name of Fred Ward, who's been working with incarcerated felons. Latoya Smith, who's been working with incarcerated women. Those are the kinds of individuals who've been really doing work under, behind the scenes to ensure that Cleveland is a community that is uh, that is equal and just. The keynote address for the evening was given by author, philanthropist, and actor Hill Harper, best known for his work on Homeland and CSI New York. Harper spoke on the evening's theme, Rebuild Today and Evolve Tomorrow. If we're talking about solving big problems, what do we need, y'all? Big energy. It just can't be little energy. And I would suggest to you that many of us are complicit in living our lives to a level of too little energy, talking about we want to solve big problems, but we're not bringing enough energy to the table to solve those problems. For more information on the Cleveland branch of the NAACP or to learn how to become a member, visit their website at clevelandnaacp.org. Ward 7 Councilman T.J. Dow hosted his annual Legacy Breakfast at the Thurgood Marshall Recreation Center. Residents in the area had a chance to catch up with one another over a delicious breakfast. Councilman Dow spoke with his constituents and honored some of them for their work in the community. For more information, visit ClevelandCityCouncil.org. Kwanzaa is usually celebrated during winter, but a local community group has been making sure the holiday gets plenty of summertime attention as well. Hundreds came out to celebrate African heritage with music, food, and lots of fun at the 7th annual Emoja Parade and Festival. The parade started on East 13th in Superior, then ventured towards Voinovich Bicentennial Park for a festival on the lake. Along the parade route, bands were playing and dance teams performed. Organizers say during the wintertime, it's too cold to celebrate your heritage outdoors, so holding the parade and festival in the summer has worked out for everyone. Well, this is all about celebration and unity, and we wanted to do something that, that expressed our heritage when it's warm outside. So, you know, most of the time during Kwanzaa, it's cold in December, January, Martin Luther King is cold, and, and February is cold, Black History Month. Mm -hmm. But, you know, we're tropical people, we like to be out warm, so we wanted to bring some kind of culture to our community where it's warm outside, and do it downtown. The word emoja is Swahili for unity. A local organization held a spring fling at Karush Park, aiming to reach out to those in the community and promote peace. Promote love first in the city of Cleveland, and we do it through a series of events called Wear the Shirt, which is these. And when you wear the shirt, you take a stand and you choose love over hate. So that is the movement. I want people to get love and choose love over hate. I want our community to come together I want our kids, I want our seniors, I want our middle-aged people, everybody to just get together and spread love around Cleveland. We got so much violence going on around Cleveland that we just want to spread love and bring everybody together. Cleveland State University hosted their first annual Art and Humanities Alive Festival, or better known as AHA. 
for the first time ever in the city of Cleveland using all of our partners, the libraries, Playhouse Square, and various arts organizations, and Cleveland State's assets in the arts. We're bringing together music, dance, theater, authors, historians, and all kinds of performers to create the first ever combination festival of this type in the city of Cleveland. Whether you're a practicing vegan or just have an interest in learning more about it, the Cleveland Vegan Society's fourth annual VegFest at the Huntington Convention Center was the perfect way to spend your day. We're having a huge day of speakers, films, music, and cooking demonstrations along with children's activities. And uh, you can get your picture taken with our mascot, Brock O. Lee. There's a large part of the population that is becoming more interested in, in vegan living and how living vegan is good for your health, it's good for the animals, it's good for the environment. Many more people are getting interested in this idea, or even if they're just curious, they want to come down here for the good food, they can learn something through the speakers. Um, we, we're bringing 8,000 people to downtown Cleveland. It's already a busy day down here because there's other events going on, but we feel like this is a real asset for the city. For the fourth year, Thursday nights at Edgewater Beach will be rocking all summer long. I wanna thank you for letting me be back. Bands like Ace Moeller entertain the crowds at Edgewater Live, presented by Cuyahoga Community College. Beachgoers can enjoy the variety of food and drinks from the new multi-million dollar Edgewater Beach House, plus live musical performances. The Thursday night concert series will rock the lakefront from June 8th to August 10th. Two bands every night for the next 10 weeks every Thursday. It's a new view on happy hour and we have really covered a lot of different genres. So everything from reggae to country to modern day 90s, everything for, there's something for everyone. Besides the beach house food, there will be a lineup of more than a dozen local food trucks each week. Don't forget the spectacular views of Lake Erie and Cleveland's skyline while sitting on the second story of the Beach House. For more information on the Edgewater Beach House, please go to their website, clevelandmetroparks.com. It's that time of the year again for TGIF-TF, which is, thank goodness, it's Food Truck Friday. All summer long, food trucks will be parked by the free stamp at City Hall on Fridays from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. Each week, there will be a variety of food trucks, which celebrates the diversity of Cleveland through food and music. Besides all the great food, each week some of Cleveland's most talented local bands will provide the musical entertainment. People who work downtown say they like the convenience of Food Truck Fridays. I mean, utilizing this amazing park to have food trucks and stuff like that, you know, especially in an area where there's not that many restaurants around here and you're supporting these local entrepreneurs, you know, they're working hard to make a living and maybe someday many of them will be uh, bricks and mortar restaurants someday and it's a great event. It brings people out, brings people together, including myself. You know, I've got to run back. i got a conference call at 1230, so quick five minutes to run out. Remember, Food Truck Friday runs now through October 9th. Well, thanks for watching TV20 News. We are Cleveland. I'm Leah Hasledge. Up next, we'll have Christian Patterson with the Inside Sports Report.